glad to come back to be on the platform. Second time, I enjoyed being in the committee several times. What do you see, Frank? Can you hear back there? Can you hear me? Yeah. Wow. All okay? Well, uh, I was doing thinking about the um, what this ceremony means to this community, and I think in particular of what it means in 20... 42. Will you two young ladies please stand? Now there you see 2042. And we are happy that you're going to be around at that time because I think a lot of us are not going to be around at that time. But let's give them a hand. Thank you very much for standing up. Because 2042, that's 50 years from now. And I, um, I remember coming back Greenville because my family uh, served with an infantry division, the 80th Infantry Division in World War II. And I came back in November of 45 and Camp Reynolds is still here. And my family was in Greenville. And um, I was glad to come out and look at Camp Reynolds. Of course, things were over then. But um, I could see and I've watched Camp Reynolds in and out of the be coming back home because Greenville now is my home and uh, I enjoy coming back here and um, I think that this is a, this community and the feeling and in your heart that's what counts it's what's in our heart is what counts and people talk about this and I talk about that but Pennsylvania and I, this is the first time that I ever had a home of my own right in this area now. And I, I was born in Laramie, Wyoming, and went from Wyoming to Nebraska, and from Nebraska to Iowa, and Iowa, West Virginia, and, um, and come back to, and came to Pennsylvania because my, my grandpappy was a Civil War veteran, lived down in Armstrong County, and mind you, the church in which he was baptized, my grandpappy, down at Adrian, near Worthington, near Catanning. I'm going to be there next Sunday in that church where my grandpappy was brought up right in that community. And I'm looking forward to it because there's nothing like home. This is home. This is home. My dad wanted to come back to Pennsylvania, although he was a Nebraska farmer boy. Pennsylvania, my grandpappy loved Pennsylvania, and he breathed Pennsylvania, but after the Civil War, they gave those veterans a quarter section of land. He was a poor boy. They gave him 160 acres of land. He took his pride, a team of horses, and a cow, and went out to, to, um, to Nebraska, and stayed there and raised a family of 10. I want to tell you something. I knew that grandpappy of mine. He was shot up in the World War II, a world in the Civil War, and um, boy, I want to tell you something. Talk about bringing up a family. He knew what it was all about. He was a GI soldier, and he raised that family right, and I thank God for it. Well, what am I talking about me for? Because it's you that I'm talking about. It's this community. And what it means to this community to have this capsule and to have this uh, feeling of, blo of belonging. Just think of, of being a place that you can call yours. I just think that's great. I just love having a place that I can look people in the face and say, I know you and I've lived with you and I've been with you. Because when you live with people, they know you. I served with an infantry division three and a half years, and I was down at, uh, in Washington, D.C., Crystal City. I didn't know where Crystal City is, but I know now. It's a, a pile of um, a bunch of uh, beautiful uh, high-rise uh, hotels near the National Airport, and they call that Crystal City. I was down there to my division reunion. We had a thousand there in my division. 80th oh, Infantry Division. Be a part of and they came from all the United States. Be a part of Wonderful. Feel close to you. Wonderful. And the 
what is when you can gather back and life. there's nothing like those friendships so I'm gonna and those feelings. When I think of the men that I had to bury, my own friends, that is something else. There were more sermons preached to me and never a word said by those I had to bury. And I want to tell you, friends, we have the great, we have a, we, they can talk all they want to about a great country, but we, our country is right here in this community, all throughout this area. And uh, I want to congratulate you and I want to thank you for allowing me to be a part of this community, to be a part of it and feel close to you in the, what has been given and the lives that have been given. So I'm going to close, and I got up. I dug out my little. I even put my collar on, and I and I got my little book out, and I'm going to dedicate. I'm going to bless that little little uh, operation there. That capsule. And I have a prayer here, especially for that prayer for that for that uh, capsule. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, who has commanded every man to offer unto you a fine own gifts according to the purpose of his heart, and who dost abundantly requite them from thine eternal bounty, be pleased to accept, we beseech thee, this offering now made unto thee by thy servants, and grant that it may be used unto thy glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now I'm going to use the word to bless him. O oh God, by whose word all things are sanctified, pour out thy benediction upon this capsule, that whoever shall open it according to thy purpose will in thanksgiving unto thee make glory to thy holy name, through Jesus Christ thy Son, our Lord. Amen. So I just had to dig this out as a benediction for that little capsule. I couldn't get, I refused to do that, but it's beautiful. Thank you very much. Okay, Frank. Oh, I wish Tom Ridge would get here. Is Tom come close to coming? Tom, Tom Ridge is not coming. Uh, thank you, John. I'll see you for breakfast at the patio. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you for your time, John, too. Uh, at this time, we wish to uh, 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 invite uh, Representative Mike Britza to come up and uh, share some time with us. Uh, Mike is uh, uh, well known in the area, and Mike is going to follow, help follow through with our roadside uh, our endeavor to have the roadside plaque put here. He's aware as much as anybody else that we need some recognition in the, in the future, otherwise it will disappear. Then I'll come back and bother again after Mr. Ritzer. Thank you, you want to invite Thank you, Frank. Kind of tough to follow a a trooper like the colonel here, but I'm going to do my best. I'm, I'm really very pleased uh, to have been invited here. I felt very badly earlier in the, in the year, at the end of June, that I wasn't able to be here to participate in the activities that took place in commemorating uh, uh, the 50th anniversary here of Camp Reynolds. However, we were in the midst of a, a budget uh, debate and being on the Appropriations Committee in Harrisburg, it was impossible for me to get out of Harrisburg uh, during that week. So I'm, I'm really happy to, to be able to be here today and we've got a beautiful afternoon uh, to bury the time capsule. It'll be open in, in 50 years. I hope, Colonel, that I figure I have a shot. <laughs> I was thinking, you know, I'd be like 91, you know, I think, Tommy, you might have a shot, you know. Maybe if we take good care of ourselves, if I could stay off the cigarettes, I, you know, maybe I'll have a shot to be here, and it would really be a pleasure, and I'd be thrilled to, to do that. But I thought of what I wanted to say today, and, and I always have a 
difficult time when I talk about our soldiers and our veterans because I, it's just such a subject with me when, when you consider uh, what took place during the great wars that this country has fought. From a historical standpoint, uh, there's no question that this area should be marked, it should be a tribute, and it should be remembered always by the people of Mercer County and the people that have the opportunity to pass through here. Literally thousands of young men came through here. They're, they were destined for places unknown. Many of those, actually most of those men, uh, their lives would be changed forever. It's, many of them would return. They, they may return physically well or, or physically intact. But each and every one of those men returned with memories of the horrors of war and needed to get over that and set those memories aside and, and move on with their lives. And, and with the help of God, most of them did that. But think of the other hundreds or the, perhaps thousands, really, of, of young men who came through these gates here in Camp Reynolds that would never return to this country. They really gave, gave everything of themselves so that we could live in freedom and enjoy the freedoms that we enjoy. And not only us, but the entire world. It's hard to imagine the state of the world today had it not been for the sacrifices of these men who passed through the gates of Camp Reynolds some 50 years ago. And then there's also the group that did return, and they returned without arms, without legs, badly injured, badly wounded, carrying scars that they'd carried for the rest of their lives. So it's appropriate, and I think it's a tribute to this community and to the people who have gotten involved in this and put in that extra effort to take the time out of their busy lives to organize this tribute and to, to take the time to bury this time capsule so that the men who passed through Camp Reynolds some 50 years ago would be remembered well into the next century for the sacrifice that they've made in serving this country and in allowing this country to, to move into the next century as a free democracy and to bring with it the rest of the world. You know, there are few people in the history of, of the world who have sacrificed so much for such a noble cause. And when you think of what was going through the minds of the young men who passed through Camp Reynolds, this was really one of the last stops some of the last American soil that these boys would have the privilege to walk on in many cases. And so they left here, many of them, I'm sure they were afraid, I'm sure that they were gung-ho, they were good soldiers, and they were prepared to give everything it took for our country. And it's really appropriate that, that we're here today, and it's really a tribute to the people of this community that, that they're being recognized uh, today and, and through the festivities that have occurred over the past several uh, months here. From a historical perspective also, I think it's, it's noteworthy that Reynolds is, is rather unique in the fact that it developed out of, out of this camp. Most communities in western Pennsylvania and for that part throughout the, the country, uh, it developed because of their proximity perhaps to a lake or because the old mill was located at a certain fall or a certain bend in a river or because of their proximity to coal fields or any number of other natural reasons. Our community of Reynolds is a little different in the respect that it it's a, it's a newer community that really it's not one of the communities that are hundreds of years old but it's a community that developed uh, as such out of the camp that was built here to serve this country in World War II. And when you look at what is here today, and, and in all probability what wouldn't be here if it hadn't been for the development of Camp Reynolds, it's, it's really very interesting, I think. The, uh, uh, it's a beautiful suburban community with a very strong and growing industrial uh, park uh, that, that uh, we're all very excited about. And there's the tremendous potential here as we reflect on the past, there's a tremendous potential here in the Reynolds area as we go into the future. A substantial commitment has been made to this area from both the state and federal government uh, to utilize the resources that are available here and, and 
some of the land that's available here for economic development. And so we look ahead to the future with some optimism and hopes that, that there will be further growth here, that this community will, will continue to improve, and that as it does that, that it, it never forgets its roots, and it never forgets those soldiers that passed this way some 50 years ago, guaranteeing our freedom into the next century. I'd like to thank you all for listening to me and for giving me the opportunity this morning to share some of my thoughts with you on this very important subject, a subject that's obviously very dear to all of you as Reynolds, uh, Transfer Reynolds, Pima Tuning Township uh, residents, and as Americans. Thank you very much.